ओम श्री राम जय राम जय जय राम ओम श्री राम जय राम जय जय राम ओम श्री राम जय राम जय जय राम सैल्यूटेशंस टू परम पूज्य पप्पा सैल्यूटेशंस टू परम पूज्य माता जी सैल्यूटेशंस टू परम पूज्य स्वामी जी सैल्यूटेशंस टू परम पूज्य स्वामी पद्मनाभान जी महाराज सैल्यूटेशंस टू ऑल अदर forms of god today papa has made it possible for us to reach a stage where we can evaluate we can consolidate our whole year's journey and this particular shloka of vivek chudamani throws light as to what should be our attitude while we are on the spiritual path not merely hearing papa in one of his quotation used to mention through mere superficial churning of thought ramdas's words cannot be understood you can throw light on him on them only when you bring with you the blazing torch of your own perfected experience experience is gained by diving into the depth of your own mind mere assertion of the truth is not realization realization means direct perception and experience so when he prompted us to take up the in-depth study of in quest of god we were reading and reading and reading you know then only we are reminded by papa mere reading will not help you try to stitch those things with your own life god has provided ample opportunities for us to learn all the basics that is contained for a successful and blissful life but we have not recognized its relevance or value so then we, every chapter when we go through we try to parade before our mind what are the experiences he made us to go through then connect them up so that we will be able to understand it otherwise it will be a textual or academic exercise in one of the uh, talks with devotees pooja mata ji used to emphasize the need for reading this text repeatedly she said i wanted all of you to read in quest of god 11 times so that your mind would turn within to nirguna brahman there is a special reason for papa making me asking you to read in quest of god daily for 11 days it is intended to take you within you may not attain papa within you on the 11th reading but you will at least have started going within it is like entering the ashram gates once you are within the gates you have nothing to fear likewise once you turn your gaze within you have nothing to worry these are all inspiring words suddenly you know they made us to become aware of these words for people like us it is a tough job to turn within and understand the import of each and every chapter and the first and foremost hint papa gave was when this intense study was undertaken as was covered in the announcement this the inquest of god starts with the picture of a person who has been subjected to go through successive failures 
finding no answer to many of his pressing problems like all of us. The challenges he faced, the duties he had to perform, the commitment he had to honor, they were like a roadblock for him. He did not know where to go, how to go. And then he cried. These are the first words. And the 37th chapter end, it lands in what? He says in Panchapantava cave, to quote the same word, Now, that was in 1923, Ramdas stays by Ram's command in a cave called Panchapandava Cave at the Kadri Hill and lives there a serene life, devoting his whole time in talking about, writing off and meditating on that all-loving and glorious Ram. So it starts from stress and ends in serenity. This is the clue he gave us. We would have read it many a times, but this did not strike to us. But when he insisted that you, Ramdas's words cannot be understood by merely reading, some extra effort is necessary, and then only all these things can be unearthed. This is what exactly this shloga, which now we heard, wants us to give trust to. We need a guru to tell us. The spiritual preceptor guides us. But if we stop with that, we may not be able to eke out the fullest benefit. But if we go with the intense aspiration to make it a reality in our life, by pursuing it with all seriousness, we have been assured that we will be able to get the treasure within. So the treasure has been packed in 36 chapters here. Each chapter will give us something. And this was what he instructed us from within. And we were able to bring out some of it. The total 37 chapters gave us 198 points. 198 hints or points that will help us in our day-to-day -day life. This is exactly what Papa meant. We should relate, relate this with our own life. And we don't have to go anywhere else. You know there was no preceptor for Papa. He was relying solely on the God and Guru within. Because of his intensity, aspiration and keenness, he did not need any guidance from within, from without. Automatically, whatever is to be known, whatever is to be explored, whatever is to be unearthed, it started coming one by one, one by one. So similarly, he says, if we start doing the digging, whatever may be the roadblocks, he will clear it in due time. So that is how the journey started and we thought we would be able to share a few. We will not be able to share the whole thing in the seven weeks, seven days because it will be too much for our intellect or mind to memorize. Then we thought, you know, we selected about 24 or 25 out of it which we will take up one by one from tomorrow, at least two or three from from uh, those things every day. We will make an attempt. But it has, it has come out in the form of a small book called Stress to Serenity. This will be given to everybody at the time of giving prasad. When we get this book, if, I'm sure everybody will be having the copy of In Quest of God. When they read one chapter, they may find the the hints from, uh, for the first chapter from here. Similarly, all chapters have. So then we ponder over. We don't have to cover it in a fixed play, in a time. Suppose one chapter a day. In one month's time or one and a half month's time. 
we will make an intense exploration. Though outwardly it has, it, the words are simple and innocent, it contains profound truth. Still we cannot say that we have been able to find out the whole thing. It is a, a never-ending journey. As we try to become pure and pure in our heart, more and more gems will be found in this. So it depends upon the purity of our mind. And the inquest of God helps us to move from the impure state to the purity level. These are the things to be born in our mind when we take up this, when we go through the inquest of God once again and with the essence, quintessence of what has been unearthed. We are not to stop. At every chapter we will get something. Again, again, again. Many of you who might have been following the uh, Google classes or uh, sessions we had throughout the last year, new, new things would come. Again we take up. Again we arrive at new, new hints and guides. So that is about the overview of the in-depth study of in quest of God. And uh, some guidance were given by Pooja Swamiji Maharaj during his last year at the time of launching this. I will just read out some of the points. On the 27th of December 2021, His Holiness Swami Padmanabhanji Maharaj of Divine Life Society Rishikesh launched the year-long Swadhyaya Sadhana Sankalpa with his Ashirvajan. Swamiji said, first is Swadhyaya, an important component of sadhana. Puja Swamiji said that the year-long Swadhyaya of the book In Quest of God is a befitting decision because Swadhyaya is an important component in the spiritual journey. Shravan, Manan and Nididhyasan Puja Swamiji pointed out that first we should undertake Shravana, which can be either through hearing or reading. This should be followed by Manana, contemplation on what we have heard or read, and which is subsequently followed by Nididhyasana, absorbing what we have read or heard and contemplated upon. Effective clue for understanding Swadhyaya. An easy clue given by Puja Swamiji as a means to effectively undertake Swadhyaya or an in-depth study was to dwell on some of the point in the chapters. For example, Puja Swamiji took up the second chapter, Renunciation. In this chapter, he read out the following sentences. Quote, The word, the sole protector of the world, men are deluded, when they declare, I do this, I do that, this is mine, that is mine, all, O oh Ram, is thine, and all things are done by thee alone. Thy slave's one prayer to thee is to take him under thy complete guidance and remove his I-ness. He dissected as it were, and elaborately, Puja Swamiji dissected them as it were, this particular portion, and elaborately spoke on them, touching upon all the important facets. One prayer. Puja Swamiji highlighted the fact that Beloved Papa had only one prayer at heart. There was no other, and therefore it was heard. Sorry, that means concentrated, na? Or when the mind is crowded with so many prayers, the focused, concentrated attention will not be there. So Swamiji said, Papa had, the first clue we get, Papa had only one prayer, remove the I-ness from my heart. Prerequisite for renunciation. Puja Swamiji continued reading Beloved Papa's words, that was very, very important. Quote, this prayer was heard. 
Ramdas's heart heaved a deep sigh. A hazy desire to renounce all and wander over the earth in the garb of a mendicant in quest of gram wafted over his mind. Again, Pooja Swami said that beloved Papa was aware that this prayer was heard and it was only then he took sannyas. Therefore, the prerequisites for sannyas are prerequisites for sannyas are a sincere prayer from the innermost core of the heart and a realization that the prayer has been heard by Bhagavan. A sincere prayer from the innermost core of our heart and a realization of the prayer has been heard. Only then sannyas becomes real sannyas. Two types of sannyas. Vividisha eh? sannyas and vidvat sannyas. Renunciation of the seeker, renunciation of the knower. Usually people take sannyas to make this prayer and to realize it at some point of time. Whereas in Berat Papa's case, the prayer was heard after which he took sannyas. Sp Puja Swamiji emphasized, spiritual practices should not be done mechanically. All of us make prayers for worldly things, supra-worldly things, and also for realization. How far are the prayers sincere? Do we realize that? Whatever prayers mean to us and to Bhagavan was explained through a story. Swamiji then gave us the story. A man found a baby parrot when he was out on a walk. He brought it home. As this man was accustomed to singing the divine name, the parrot also learnt it. Whenever guests visited, this man proudly made his parrot chant the divine name which fascinated the visitors. Once a mischievous visitor taught the parrot to say, Master, you have imprisoned me, release me. The next time visitors came to this man's house, he asked the parrot to chant. The parrot chanted the divine name for a few minutes and then uttered, Master, you have imprisoned me, release me. Immediately the man opened the cage, set the bird free. This is the important point. No? None of us should forget this. As the bird was bred in captivity, did not know what freedom was, it flew about for a while, came back to its cage, sat inside. We are much like the parrot. We pray for freedom, but do not know how to be free. We take a leap and then in a short while forget about our ultimate freedom. As our spiritual endeavors are not as deep as they should be, we are unable to become free birds. Therefore, prayer and spiritual practices should come from the inner core of our being. Introspection should be done to know how far we have progressed. Puja Swamiji also touched this point. All our spiritual practices should enable us to see God everywhere. This was explained through an interesting anecdote of a little child who goes into the garden to pluck flowers for his father's puja. One day, the little boy did not return on, return on time, so the parents went out to look for him. They found him standing in front of a flower with folded hands. They inquired, and all he said in response, pointing to a flower was, Bhagavan, Bhagavan. It was a flower that looked like a Shivalinga. The regular puja had made the pure-hearted child see divinity in everything, which is the true purpose of worship. <clears throat> true service. Service becomes service only when we feel the presence of Bhagavan in all forms. 
Puja Swamiji explained this through an inspiring story called Martin the Cobbler. Martin was a devout cobbler. One day when he was reading the Bible, he heard a voice, Martin, Martin. He looked around, couldn't see anyone. Therefore, he continued reading. The voice called again, Martin, Martin. He asked, who is it? The voice answered, it is me, God. I shall visit you tomorrow. Martin was excited. The next morning, he prepared some tea for the Lord and awaited his arrival. However, no one special came that way. He saw the sweeper shivering in the street and invited him to have some tea. Then continued to wait for the Lord. After a while, he saw a lady fruit vendor and the boy who carried her fruits to the market, arguing as they walked. He invited them to have some tea. He urged the boy to hasten his pace so that they would reach the market on time. He told the lady to be calm with the boy as he was just a boy. He offered them some tea. They too left after having tea. Then he continued to wait for God. Off and on, looking out of the window, he happened to see a lady with a newborn baby shivering in the cold. He invited her in. He gave her some tea, something to eat. When she was leaving, he offered her his coat for warmth. Thereafter, he continued to wait. Soon it started getting dark outside. He thought to himself that he may have hallucinated about God speaking to him. He picked up his Bible, continued reading. Soon he heard the voice call out, Martin. He immediately said, God, I waited for you. You did not come. God replied, I came to you. I was hungry and you fed me. I was thirsty and you gave me a drink. I was naked and you clothed me. God wants us to see him in all forms and serve him all. Puja Swamiji then concluded by saying that internally the divine name should continually resonate within us and externally we should try to serve him in all forms. All these points are, we are reading it again and again and again. It helped us a lot. It is helping us. Today also we, we look forward for Swamiji's words of wisdom to keep us on the path with all sincerity, with all seriousness, with all earnestness. During the next seven days, that is from tomorrow, you know, we have Akhanda Ramnam from today. Nama with the feeling. Papa keeps on emphasizing about it. He put it bluntly also. The Nama should be chanted with the feeling that I am chanting the name of one who is within me <laughs> and who is making me to chant. <coughs> Every time when we chant, probably we may not be able to rem remember because we are not habituated. We are not habituated to do so. We join the uh, congregational chanting. We enjoy. It keeps us away from our routine thoughts. But what is the positive side? That is what Papa emphasizes by asking us to chant with the feeling that I am chanting the name of one who is within me and who is making me to chant. We are praying to Papa now who is seated within us in the form of remembrance in our heart, that during our seven days non-stop chanting of the holy and all-powerful Ramnam, kindly enable us to remember these words. Though not fully, at least on some, some point, some po moments during our chanting, so that we will be able to derive the best, as Puja Madhaji said, you know, inward journey, the Nirguna, Anupav, that we will be able to get. So that will be going on. And we also pray to Papa to bless us with that state of mind. And this booklet will be given to everybody at the time of their le leaving. And uh, as was announced, uh, prompting came to a devotee that we should have uh, some boats, you know, 
So there were 30 boats. Papas, you know, as Vital Rao, we started from Mangalore on the 27th of December 1921, uh, sorry, 1922. And after uh, eight or nine months, he was back to Mangalore. So Mangalore to Mangalore. Every place that is mentioned there, something about the Tiatra, a very few words, and then an inspiring words of words of Papa. Even if we miss one, the other one will help. Even if we miss that, the another one will help. So similarly, there are 30 words of wisdom, powerful words that will touch and kindle our journey. We request all of you to kindly, intensely go through it during these seven days. Every day we will cover two or three or four. Today also we will cover three or four after, before we close this uh, session. And then you can take it, you know, nowadays science and, through science and technology, Papa is providing facilities for us to take a photograph in the mobile itself and pass it on to as many friends as possible. Because one word, you know, Swamiji quoted three anecdotes. Which are the anecdotes? Forgotten. Martin, ah, last, last one, then. <laughs> Story of the parrot, then. <laughs> now, you see now, when once we read, it stays. Similarly, it will stay. With attentiveness, with a, with a view to get it imprinted in our heart. You know? That sort of going through should be there. So kindly pass it on to as many friends who have not been able to be present in this, for this occasion. Uh, then, yes. Every day, during this one year, 10 months to be more precise, we were able to get the blessings of a few saints. Every day we will have the privilege of seeing them and hearing them and that will give a boost to our sadhana. Today we will have Swami Tejo Mayandaji and then after that we look forward to hear Puja Swamiji's words of wisdom. And after this, uh, when do we show the four now itself? Later, 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 later. So now, Tejo Man. Go ahead with our program. Every day morning, at 6 o'clock, we go to the Samadhi Mandir because normally we have our arati at 6 o'clock in the evening. Today there won't be any arati at 6 o'clock. Tomorrow morning, 6 o'clock, we will have the arati. And then we will move to, all of us will chant. It will be non-stop. Like Papa used to say, the, the oil is poured from one tin to another, you know. It will be unbroken. Similarly, after the arati, we will all chant and enter into the next samadhi mandir and then continue. And 6.30, we all assemble, those who are not taking part in the Ramnam there, we will all assemble here in Panchavadi and we will continue the Ramnam. At 7 o'clock, we will start the flower offering. Today morning it was experimented and it was a, it was proving to be excellent. So people will go in line, 50, 50, first ladies, then gents, like that. They will take the flowers, which will be kept at the entrance of the Bhajan Hall, with Ramnam here, with Ramnam in their lips, with Ramnam in their mind, they will all go to the sh shrine there, Sanctum Sanctorum, place the flower with a heart full of gratitude, 
for all that they have been facilitating us all these years with a heart full of gratitude we will offer the flower at their holy feet there come out and have the paduka tirtha from outside and then go for breakfast that orderliness no there is not a military discipline that orderliness born out of our dedication born out of our conviction born out of our the ideal for which we are committed it should the orderliness should come out of that individually kindly cooperate with us and then in the evening also we have mentioned so this should uh, this will go on 10 to 11:30 morning again we will have the session where puja swami ji will keep share some thoughts in the evening we will try to share some of the few points we have unearthed from the uh, stress to serenity and there will be uh, like some ppts ashirvajan uh, so that every day we will get avial no so many items so many items for our feast should know the correct words my life may become a flower uh, you can take it from that pa ala i'm talking pathway to pathway to joy mm. papa has mentioned about this flower pathway to joy konda from the reminds us that at the time of uh, offering the flower why not we remember param puja papa's words here he says let life be like the flower born in full bloom given away utterly petals scent and all to the gardener who brought it into existence the joy of the flower lies in its self offering to its loving maker so our life be a dedicated flower at the feet of our divine master life thus lived alone is filled with real blessedness peace and joy so at the time of offering the flower not merely the flower which symbolically represents this but let us also mentally try to go through we will again read some birds will remain with us you know that is enough let life be like the flower born in full bloom given away utterly petals scent and all to the gardener who brought it into existence right from the our birth he gave us a human birth right from that moment till this moment he has been providing facilitating us with whatever we need through mother nature and society his own creations he is taking care of us we are unaware so by this act we are trying to become aware of it the joy of the flower lies in its self offering to its loving maker so our life be a dedicated flower at the feet of our divine maker life thus lived alone is filled with real blessedness peace and joy let us try to uh, bring in all these dimension while doing this hari om if anything else is to be shared i will we will do it at the end ashirvadam